What if Terraria looked realistic? Terraria has a bunch of fictional biomes, and I thought to myself, what would they look like if they were more realistic? This is part one of my series, Art Amateur Tries to Illustrate Terraria Biomes. I will be illustrating the corruption, where I will be making three artworks, and the last one, I'm sure you don't want to miss. I will be illustrating all kinds of cool corruption elements, from the flora to the terrifying fauna, and some other interesting stuff. Let's get into it. Again, I'll be illustrating three artworks involving the corruption, starting off with the general landscape, then showing off the chasm with all its wildlife, and finally, the cave. To make sure that my illustrations fit with the game Terraria as a whole, I did some research. And I found some interesting details and bits of lore that I'm sure you don't know about. Let's talk about them while I illustrate the artwork. This first illustration will show you the scenery of the corruption, and I want it to look unsettling, dull, and desolate. It's going to be like a hilly meadow. Now here's one thing you already know about the corruption. Chasms. The corruption biomes have deep chasms that lead... somewhere. Now by looking at the official Terraria page of the corruption, specifically in the trivia section, it says that these chasms could be interpreted as worm tunnels, created by a certain boss. Now. Chasms and tunnels are two different terms, and as you can see, I am creating a chasm, which can be seen on the surface. This certain boss creates many tunnels as it digs around, and some of them, unstable and closer to the surface, collapses in on itself. So in this landscape, there's going to be a lot of chasms and cracks on the ground, showing the instability of the surface. And the inside of the chasm will be relevant for the third artwork of this video, which will be the underground corruption. Now with that done, it's time for some coloring. I started off with grayscale, with the foreground elements being the darkest, and the sky being the brightest. The chasms are going to be an exception. I will say this a lot, we need a counter. Now, let's add some detail. As you can see, I added a grassy texture to the foreground, and for the rest of the landscape, just some simple details. Since these plots of land are further away, that means details aren't really that observable. Also, you may notice that the further the landscape is, the more it looks like it's incorporated into the sky. That's because the further away you are from an object, there is more atmosphere or air between you and that thing. And air scatters light. And the further away something is, that scattering of light becomes more noticeable. In the case of a blue sky, things further away look blue, because there are many air molecules scattering blue light. The landscape might also fade into the sky, because those air molecules and scattered light act as light fog which can decrease the visibility of things far away. If you don't believe me, here's more examples of real landscapes. Now, with most of the detail added, let's try to add some color into the landscape. Since it's the corruption, it's going to have that beautiful dark purple. Does it look good? Eh, I'm not sure. I think it's because of the sky. Let's add that blue color into the sky and there we go! Not going to lie, it looks pretty much complete. Comparing it to the actual corruption, it definitely looks similar. There are just a few more things to refine and add before it really sells the corruption theme. Like the chasm, a forest in the distance, this will be important later on for the second artwork, some rocks, mushrooms, vile mushrooms, and a bunch of interesting brown strokes exiting the chasm. This will be important for the second artwork. And that's about it. It doesn't look like a lot, but that's the point. As I said in the beginning, it's meant to look unsettling, dull, and desolate. And the artwork perfectly encapsulates those feelings. It's not really interesting to look at, apart from the chasms that swerve around the landscape, but it gives you an overview as to what a more realistic corruption would look like. Anyway, let's move on to the second artwork. The second artwork will be focusing on the chasm entrance. I want this chasm entrance to look intimidating and scary. And there will be an interesting focus point over here. 
I feel like you've seen it already. Cliff outlines. I was really struggling with making them look good. All I see is just two forms that I doubt will have any potential. Now, with the foreground, I decided to add some cracks and crevices to show the unstable nature of the ground. These crevices will be scattered all throughout the surface. Not right now, but later it will be really apparent. Then beyond this chasm, I added another chasm far away. If you looked at the landscape of the first artwork, you could see these two prominent chasms. And then looking at the second artwork, you can see that I basically replicated these chasms, but in a new perspective. It took me a while to figure out how to make the second chasm look natural, and eventually, I created this mess, which I just decided to accept. I promise this has potential, right? Anyway, coloring. Like last time, it's going to be grayscale. The chasm will be the darkest because it's a chasm, what were you expecting, huh? I also filled in these crevices with the same color. With the landscape coloring finish, I decided to add some elements to make this artwork more interesting. Now, like almost any other biome in Terraria, there is a very important element that I need to add. Trees. So I illustrated two tree trunks, then putting them in suitable positions. But then, there was some judgment, and one of the trees unfortunately had to go away. Anyway, let's detail the chasm. Again, as I have mentioned, I want to make it look intimidating and scary. Now this won't be the main focus point of the artwork, so I will just add some minuscule yet significant details that give it a chasm slash cliff like texture. And look! There's a cave! I wonder what this will be for. Okay, that's enough teasing. With the chasm fully detailed, now it's time to add a border surrounding the chasm. In Terraria, corruption chasms are normally bordered by ebonstone. Now, the color of ebonstone is dark purple, and it looks very organic. There is also these occasional thorns or spikes that just jut out of the stone. For now, I added some details to make it look rocky and rough. Then, I added some grass. This is really where the flora part shines. If you've ever explored the corruption or crimson in pre-hard mode, I'm sure these sounds sound familiar. Thorns. Yep, these things. I'll be adding them into my artwork. They'll be kind of like thorny bushes, but instead of a bush, it's a bunch of branching stems. Then I illustrated a lot more flora stuff, like a deadweed plant, a canopy for the trees, and detailed the trunk of the tree. Oh, I also added these familiar looking forms. Hmm, I wonder what these could be. Not sure. And after adding some more thorns, I colored the entire landscape, making sure that it has the same color palette as the first artwork. It looks good, but we still need more detail. Let me just summarize them because they aren't important to be honest. Grass, thorns, rocks, leaves, vines, and some other details. Even though these details aren't my focus point, it's refreshing to see how detailed this artwork is. Even with one hue, I managed to make it look appealing to look at. I like it. Now, it's time for the main focus point. Where's the fauna? Here it is. The Eater of Souls. The Eater of Souls is an interesting enemy. It's a floating, flying short flatworm with the mandibles of an ant and a lot of eyes. I wanted it to look grotesque and kind of have a smooth appearance. These creatures will be coming out of the chasms and especially the caves in those chasms, which is where a third artwork will reside. Now, the normal Aether of Souls has a more triangular body without a tail. However, I wanted to add my own cell to this creature, because I can, so I added a tail. After that, it's time to add the necessary details to make this thing actually look like the Aether of Souls. Like the eyes, and its mandibles. Now, I tried detailing one of the Aether of Souls to see if my details actually look good because I actually have no idea how to detail this thing aside from the sprite reference and this cool Aether of Souls illustration. Seriously though, people are really talented. And well, scrap that first attempt. The second attempt however, is alright and I replicated these details to the rest of the Aether of Souls. Now, they aren't even done yet. I want to add more details. 
like these eyes within the trees. There are some Eater of Souls hiding from sight. And speaking of the Eater of Souls, these guys aren't really that prominent in the artwork. They look too small and don't really occupy this space that much. So I fixed it. There we go. Now there's just a few things left we need to add before we wrap up this artwork. First, the Eater of Souls looks lifeless and flat. That's because I didn't add any highlights to the eyes and adding them made it look a lot more living. Oh yeah, there's a devourer. Also, I will be incorporating some skin or scales dropping out of the Aether of Souls. The Aether of Souls in Terraria, while floating around, defying the laws of gravity, produces these particles that fall down from its body. Not sure what these things are. It might be dirt, scales, or skin flakes? Not sure. Also, this Aether of Souls doesn't really look too gory to look at. However, there's something in the trivia section that states otherwise. And now, it's really something. Oh, and one more thing. Spikes. That's the second artwork complete. I wasn't expecting this artwork to look so alive and flourishing this, despite its dullness. Even though there are some amazing aspects in this artwork, none stands out other than the Aether of Souls. It looks quite grotesque yet somewhat beautiful, and it's the first thing that you'll immediately focus on. All of the elements work together pretty well to make a cohesive creation. And I think I created my best artwork of all time. Okay, let's move on to the third artwork. The Aether of Worlds dug many tunnels under the earth. These tunnels provided the corruption a safe place to grow monsters. A place away from the elements. There grows a polyp. A growth from the corruption that when mature produces creatures made from our nightmares. These polyps, or in their mature form now alters, stop their growth and become one with the cave, infused with the magic and essence of the corruption. That's what I'm imagining a demon altar is. So I'll be illustrating a tunnel or a cave in the chasm. Simple as that. Just like those tunnels that you'll find in the underground corruption. It's not like a normal cave, it's going to look organic, like we are inside something. In Interia, you can see thorny spiky growths, demon altars, puddles of water, and a special ore that is infused with dark magic. So I tried illustrating that. I started off with outlines, adding those elements that I mentioned. As you can see, I have 4 layers of cave. Layers 4 and 3 will be involving this tunnel, and layer 1 is the continuation, but layer 2 is the chasm. The second artwork shows the cave beneath the chasm, and it's this cave where we will see the most horrifying monster that looks like it's able to eat worlds. Anyway, I colored this artwork in grayscale and started detailing. How though? Now, as I said, this cave will look a lot more organic, so I started adding some texture into this cave by using these two brushes. I use these a lot, especially for things like stony surfaces because they create a rough looking surface. Then I added some smooth lines surrounding the cave, with the bright parts being the highlights. These highlights are not from the illumination of the sun, so there must be some light sources within the cave that caused this. Then I added the corruption colors and started adding a notable element in the corruption caves, demonite ore. I added some veins of it surrounding the cave. After that, I added these organic spiky thorns. Maybe these are the polyps of the altar? Hmm. I added a lot of them. Then I incorporated some glow into the demonite ore and added some faint purple glow streaks surrounding the cave, showcasing the cave's one of two illumination sources. Now, it's time for the exciting part the demon altars. These demon altars look like rocky offshoots from a cave, and from my own lore about these things, they are like mature polyps, like those from a coral. And they produce these horrifying creatures, since it looks like a rocky offshoot, that's what I tried to replicate into my artwork, with the help of the sprite reference. And of course, the horns. Right. Now, what's missing? That's right, the glow. 
Demon altars in Terraria apparently glow. They glow a dim purple light. And with that dim glow, it dimly illuminates the surroundings. So I added some gloomy purple highlights surrounding this part of the cave. And while I'm at it, let me add some more thorny spikes. Hmm. Really good. Let's just make sure that these demon altars don't look too flat. Well, this is almost complete. There is just only one element that I have to add left. And I'm sure you've been waiting for this. The one that creates these tunnels is just looking back at you. That's the third illustration complete. This artwork represents the underground corruption really well. It looks very gloomy, organic, and very moist. Not joking. But the main star of the show is the Eater of Worlds, looking menacingly for its next meal. It may seem like a neat sight on the surface, but when you really go deep, you've encountered something that might tear the world apart. Anyway, if you want to see more realistic Terraria stuff, check out my Terraria Weapon Illustration playlist over here or my Terraria Landscape playlist over here. And I would appreciate a like, a sub, and especially a comment about your own opinions about my artwork or this video. So, thank you so much for watching, and go and do what you're meant to be doing.